This is America's most outrageous aircraft carrier plane. Not only can it carry over 3,000 people, but its wings can also hold 24 fighter jets. Thanks to its nuclear-powered engines, it is said to be able to fly for 41 days non-stop with a wingspan extending an astonishing 341 meters and a fuselage length of 170 meters. Its size even surpasses the world's largest aircraft carrier, the Ford class. Plus, it can let fighter jets land on its tail while in flight. However, because it's so enormous, there's no runway long enough for it to take off. To reduce the takeoff distance, engineers had to fit 54 auxiliary engines into its huge wings to provide vertical thrust. At the tail, it is equipped with four giant main engines that can generate over 200 tons of horizontal thrust. But getting this 5,000-ton steel beast into the sky consumes an enormous amount of fuel. Thankfully, inside the plane, there's a 9-meter diameter nuclear reactor, much larger than the one in a nuclear submarine. It can run for 1,000 hours without needing refueling. However, to avoid nuclear accidents, the reactor must be shut off during ascent and descent. Only once the plane reaches a cruising altitude of 5,000 meters does it switch to nuclear power. Each engine also requires a heat exchanger to make the energy switch during flight. Additionally, to protect the crew from nuclear radiation, the reactor is shielded by a 6-meter thick protective cover, and a new structure is added to prevent leaks in the event of a sudden crash. It's said that if the reactor is turned off within the first 20 seconds after a crash, radioactive material won't leak out. It sounds like a pretty reliable invention, but building a nuclear-powered plane larger than an aircraft carrier is extremely difficult, and many of the technical challenges can't be solved in a short time. So, the nuclear-powered plane currently exists only in science fiction. Although, back in 1955, American engineers did create a nuclear-powered prototype using the famous B-36 bomber and even conducted 89 hours of nuclear-powered flight, once they added the heavy radiation protection, the plane's weight skyrocketed, making it vulnerable to even regular anti-aircraft fire, let alone surviving a hypersonic missile chase. Since it wasn't suitable for combat, someone had the idea of turning the entire nuclear-powered plane into an airborne hotel, with over a thousand guest rooms, and amenities like a swimming pool, restaurants, bars, gyms, and even a movie theater. This way, passengers could enjoy a wonderful holiday in the clouds. Not only would they have a 360-degree view of the surrounding scenery, but they could even hold romantic weddings in the sky or fly to the North Pole to see the northern lights. And with no worries about energy supply, the nuclear-powered plane could be built like a sky city, offering spacious living areas with 20 electric engines that produce very little noise. As long as the nuclear power is controlled, there's no need to worry about radiation or running out of energy, and the plane could fly for years without landing. As for daily necessities, they could be delivered via private planes. But what if turbulence causes the Sky Hotel to shake? All it would take is a smart sensor system that detects abnormal airflows and activates counteracting vibration technology to cancel it out. Passengers wouldn't feel any bumps. The concept sounds amazing, but in reality, Humans still haven't mastered controllable nuclear fusion. While nuclear energy is promising, it seems unsuitable for aircraft. By 1979, engineers turned their attention to trains. Powered by nuclear energy, these trains could reach speeds of 300 kilometers per hour, comparable to today's high-speed rail, with just one person needed to manage the reactor. It could run non-stop forever. However, its operation is similar to steam engines, using water vapor to drive turbines but replacing the smoky coal with clean nuclear energy. Four generators provide power, and the steam is cooled into water in a condenser before being cycled back to the reactor. Since controlling radiation leaks during this process is difficult, these trains could only be used for freight. Eventually, people realized that it was more convenient to power the train using overhead lines than to haul a reactor around. From airborne planes to trains on the ground, nuclear energy hasn't yet been successfully used. But in the ocean, genius engineers found that submarines are the perfect platform for nuclear energy. 